Welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I'm Ruth Aguele. African First Ladies have been tasked to drive processes and actions aimed at enhancing the desired peace enterprise on the continent for sustainable growth and development. President Muhammad Buhari threw the challenge at the opening of the 9th General Assembly of the African First Ladies Peace Mission convened by the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha. Buhari. We'll bring you the details in our subsequent bulletin. Africa, we hear from Dubai, does not need charity but sustainable partnerships and social impact investments that support sustainable development. These were the views of panelists at the Financial Investment Network's Africa United Arab Emirates Forum holding in Dubai. Benny Adams reports that on the first day of engagements, investments worth more than $2 billion have been announced, with more to come. Zofika Gadiali is the Executive Director, Royal Office of Sheikh Hamdan bin Khalifa bin Hamdan Al Nayyan, with investment in real estate, steel, general trading, and technology, worth more than nine billion U.S. dollars in Mumbai and Dubai. He believes Africa has financed other economies but remained impoverished. A narrative he says must change. In walking the talk. He has announced a two billion U.S. dollar investment in Nigeria. If everybody had food, if everybody had clean water and access to clean energy, tell me who will want to do wrong things? Who will want to pick up guns and bullets in their hands? From Nigeria, Gadiali has got his eyes on the realization of a 2,000-acre industrial park being championed by one of Africa's youngest billionaires, the CEO of Qualys Group in Ghana. Gadi Ali is one out of several investors from Dubai and India making commitments to speed up the actualization of a prosperous Africa. Now we are talking with Abuja to build up a similar project of the BRT over there. The Foreign Investment Network is working to ensure that commitment is translated to tangible results. We have carved out our company to the heart of investors because of our strategy of trying projects to time and finance. The value of non-oil trade between the United Arab Emirates and Africa is worth $25 billion and is expected to grow by the day with more investors at this forum indicating interest to invest in Africa. From the Burj Al Arab in the United Arab Emirates, I am Ben Adams, NTA News. Still from Dubai, again, Benny Adams tells us that Nigeria is open and ready for investment in solid minerals sector. Well, these were the words of Uchechuku Oga, Minister of State, Mines and Steel Development, while announcing to the world the discovery of 10 new mineral resources in Nigeria. The minister was speaking at the Foreign Investment Network International Trade and Investment Forum in Dubai. Let's hear the details. I haven't agreed that Africa does not need charity, but partnerships that will promote the adequate investments, talking about the real investments that will turn the tides and the fortunes of the continent. Conversations here have continued on the need for these right partners to come on board. And we have Governor Erufai of Kaduna State, who will investors from all over the globe to come to Kaduna and invest, just as the Minister of State for Mines and Steel, okay, Chuku Oga, is also giving even investors have more reasons why they should invest in Nigeria. They were the second largest producer of virtually all, all other agricultural products. I would like to invite our Middle Eastern businessmen Please come to Kaduna State and invest in agriculture for export to your countries. 
They buy our own resources, minerals, take it outside, and then they bring it back for us to buy. From that office, they have invited us with the office of the Sheikh to host a, a, an event for the three regions, India, Africa, and the UAE. Because Africa has become very important to UAE. For Leila Rahal El Atfan, founder of Business Gate and president of I Am Africa platform, the United Arab Emirates is ready for Africa. According to figures from the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria's population increases by 7 million annually, which Governor Erufai says is an asset which the global community needs to take advantage of. From Dubai, United The ongoing efforts of the federal government at diversifying the economy has created more windows for foreign direct investment in the country. Guest on NTS, good morning, Nigeria. Note that the recent Nigeria International Partnership Forum in France was a veritable platform for restoring investors' confidence in the country as Africa's largest economy. Let's hear from Lydia Sampson. As nations grappled with recovery from COVID-19 pandemic, Nigeria utilized President Buhari's recent visit to France to track available investors and showcase how challenges in the country provide opportunities for investment. Guests on the program who were at the Nigeria International Partnership Forum expressed optimism that the low-hanging fruits will soon begin to manifest in the country's development. Manufacturing. You know, the point was proved by our private sector. Seven years back, this country was important cement. Now we're a net exporter. So if you come here, Nigeria, Cameroon, Ghana, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, we produce the world's 75% of cocoa. England, UK, America, Netherlands, they do 75% of chocolates. Mm. So why don't we reverse this? Thing? The investment being made from generating the electricity is not being matched by what the customers pay. And there is a gap in between. And government has to come in and uh, fill in the gap. So gradually, we, we uh, are looking at ways to remove all these bottlenecks so that the, the market can thrive. However, the need to formalize the large informal sector of the economy also re-echoed as Nigeria's digital economy is catching the attention of investors. Our ability to convince many investors, potential investors, to come to Nigeria and invest. Because uh, even before the end of the session, after each and every presentation, you will discover that there are many potential investors that will come to the federal government officials and talk to them about their willingness to come and invest in Nigeria. With ongoing reforms geared towards addressing sectoral bottlenecks, there is growing investor confidence in Nigeria and assurances that the country will soon transform from a consuming to a producing nation that promotes indigenous technology. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. The All Progressives Congress Governors Forum says it will meet with the leader of the party, President Muhammad Buhari, to discuss plans ahead of the party's national convention. Salih Abdullahi Gwanara reports that this and other peace building moves formed highlights of the forum's meeting in Abuja. After the conduct of EPC World's local government and state congresses nationwide, Governors under the party's platform have commenced the processes towards the National Convention. The APC Governors Forum Chairman Abubakar Atiku Bagudo at the end of a meeting that lasted more than three hours behind closed doors says, as a critical organ of the party, the governors are united in building a stronger APC through constructive engagement with relevant stakeholders. Sometimes electoral processes are not without annoyance, but we are, com we are happy with the conduct of the caretaker committee. We discuss issues that are all issues that are pertinent to the progress of our party. And since we are meeting, we are making suggestions to both the party and our party leader. 
The governors appealed to aggrieved party members to be patriotic and faithful to the party's internal peace-building efforts and imbibe the true spirit of sportsmanship so as to go into the National Convention United in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara, NTA News. We'll take a break now, but when we return, we're joining Adiola in Lagos. Please stay tuned. The Vice Chancellor, Samuel Adigboiga University, Ogwa, Edo State, Professor A. Babatunde Ido, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, Governing Council, and Senate, cordially invites the public to the 6th and 7th Combined Convocation Ceremony for the award of first and higher degrees and the conferment of honorary degrees. Date, Friday, 26 November 2021, at John Babatokbe Hall by 11 a.m. Convocation lecture will be delivered on Thursday, 25th November by Professor Charles Ayo at 2 p.m. Also note, that the 2021 2022 undergraduate and postgraduate admissions of Samuel Adeboyega University is on. Hurry now and secure admissions into one of the fastest growing private universities in Africa. For more information, visit www.sau.edu.ng or call 0705 079 1322. Announcer Mr. Oluyemi Esson, Acting Registrar. The town hall meeting on the Petroleum Industry Act, earlier scheduled for Thursday, 25th November 2021, has now been postponed. A new date will be announced later. All inconveniences are highly regretted. Announcer, al Lai Mohammed, Honorable Minister of Information and Culture. Outcome of Durban Paris Trade and Investment Fora is our focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week. Join us at 10:30 p.m. Tuesday Live, incisive and educative. The League of Women Voters of Nigeria, NILOV, is set to host women and men from across the globe in Abuja on the 25th of November 2021, celebrating its 25th anniversary with the theme Nigerian Women Overcoming Challenges in Politics and Leadership. Notable speakers are NAOB, Governance Team Leader and Country Director, Action Aid Nigeria, Patrick Otieno Lumumba, former Director of the Kenyan Anti Corruption Commission and Activist and Fiery Speaker, Amina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary of the United Nations. NILOV, uplifting and empowering. Empowering women, Nile of Together We Can. Announcers, Ambassador Dr. Kema Chikwe, Chairman, National Organizing Committee, Regina Omo Agege, Secretary, NOC, and Right Honorable Dame Esther Uduehi, the founder. Thank you for joining us in Lagos as we continue with Nationwide from this end. Nigeria is gradually buying into the digital space with the use of television broadcasting to promote national development and security. This formed part of discussions at a webinar to commemorate the 2021 World Television Day organized by the Lagos chapter of Radio, Television and Theatre Arts Workers Union of Nigeria, Ratao. Ruth Aria Samuel reports that highlight of the event was the inauguration of Ratao Television, an online platform to promote the union's activities in Lagos. Television no doubt plays a significant role in shaping the focus of its viewers to image their lives simply by viewing them. 
unlock their potential and contribute to the development of the society while connecting with the rest of the world. It remains the biggest accomplishment in broadcasting and multimedia since it was first introduced. With focus on its role in national development, Radio, Television and Theatre Arts Workers Union of Nigeria, RATAU, Lagos State Council provides the platform for industry players and experts in the digital field to assess the nation's readiness to dominate the digital space. The practitioners are on the verge of actually moving forward, way ahead of the total migration from analog to digital TV in Nigeria. So you can see um, even NTA2 has gone ahead and have done so a lot. In their presentations, the Registrar, Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria, and Chairman, Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, represented, said TV has opened up many sectors. Privately owned television stations, advertising generate not less than 90% of their total income. During the, the, the 2015 elections, the, the television played a very vital role especially when it came to, 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 to collision. You can be a content provider with an Android or iOS device. Ratao is a trade union with large membership, especially in the broadcast sector, and have contributed to the development of broadcasting in Nigeria. In Lagos, Ruth Ario Samuel, NTA News. Building a virile nation is not only the sole responsibility of government, but all and sundry. The misconception among many Nigerians is that this onerous assignment is primarily government's obligation. Kendi Adebisi in this report beams such light on followers whose roles are rarely brought to the fore. Leadership tasks are enormous because they're saddled with aligning their policies and programs for the society with their followers. And searching so zealously for good leadership, the public tends to lose sight of the people that these leaders are leading. Leadership and followership is said to be a supportive bond. But who wants to be a follower? This is a pertinent question as it relates to nation building. The first thing is about our mindset. You understand, our mindset, it needs to be changed, even before anything can be changed. How will the followers know their responsibility in nation building? Start from our own. Start from where you, your grassroots. According to experts, from childhood, the focus has been on being a leader and has directed attention away from the significance of following. Yet, no nation can succeed or be sustained without followers. If the followers are able to speak with one voice, understand that this is what the definition of progress is, and then they would be able to make the right demands. You really cannot lead effectively if you're not a good follower. If you cannot follow, you, might, you can't lead. It's, it's impossible. The incredible contributions of the usually very large number of followers who have myriads of skills is irrefutable. A vibrant and successful nation cannot be achieved without patriotic followers who are consciously playing their various roles, thereby adding value to national development. In Lagos, Kengde, ADBC, NTA News. We're done from here for now. Ruth, is back to you. Thank you very much, Adeola. All right, let's take you back to the story we called earlier on the opening of the 9th General Assembly of the African First Lady's Peace Mission convened by the First Lady of Nigeria, Mrs. Aisha Buhari. State House correspondent Adam Sambo will bring us the details now. The African First Lady's Peace Mission was established 24 years ago as an umbrella body of wives of African heads of state and government to play a supportive role in fostering peace as well as reducing conflicts and their effects on the continent. The importance of the assembly, President Buhari said, cannot be glossed over as peace has become an elusive subject that affects development in many regions of Africa. The activities of insurgency and banditry in particular, he said, have led to widespread displacement and poverty. It is not in doubt that women and children are the worst affected by the breakdown of peace. Therefore, as mothers, I believe you are in better position to drive the processes of peace and actions where necessary. Indeed, I am happy to know that your forum has been working towards promoting peaceful coexistence within the continent in so many ways. I would like to reiterate 
the commitment of our government to the resolutions of this assembly, and I invite other African leaders to do the same. I also call on stakeholders to support your efforts towards realizing the core objective of building a peaceful society. The president congratulated the first lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, for acquiring a piece of land for the development of the African First Lady's Peace Mission Secretariat in Abuja. It gladdens my heart to know that when completed, the secretariat will serve several purposes, including creating employment opportunities as well as generating income for sustainability. In their messages of goodwill, several participating first ladies, as well as Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, pledged to support efforts at enhancing the noble aspirations of the peace mission. As important stakeholders in our respective countries, it is important for us to take on a more direct means of engaging society to help minimize such violence and its disastrous effects on lives and property. The war in Sierra Leone will not have been won without Nigeria, without the support of the Nigerian soldiers. I know how many people died, how many Nigerians died in Sierra Leone to give us the peace and stability we have today. I want to commend Her Excellency for convening this most important meeting. We pray that during this African First Ladies Mission Summit, that you African First Ladies will develop a roadmap and effective strategy to help address some of the many challenges facing Africa especially the security challenges. The First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, had earlier enumerated, amongst others, preventing and managing conflicts, as well as engaging in humanitarian activities as clear vision of the African First Lady's peace mission. The convening of the summit is timely and a testimony to leadership of the African First Ladies as worthy ambassadors of women and the African continent. I want to encourage the African women to take advantage of every given opportunity to advance the cause of peacemaking, peace building, and conflict resolution as our contribution to rebuilding Africa. Let our involvement in this African project be guided by the AU agenda. A communique is expected at the end of the assembly. From the State House, Adam Usambu, NTA News. Following that development, Niger's First Lady, Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Buhari, has emerged new president of the African First Lady's Peace Mission. State House correspondent Ali Ukabir reports that this was part of the resolutions at a just concluded executive bureau meeting of the 9th General Assembly of the organization in Abuja. In her acceptance speech, Mrs. Buhari expressed appreciation to her colleagues for their support and understanding and for entrusting her with the responsibility. She calls for continuous harmonious working relationship towards achieving glorious destiny for Africans. Similarly, President Muhammad Buhari led African First Ladies to the foundation lane ceremony of the permanent site of the mission secretariat along Airport Road in Abuja. A joint study by ECOWAS, ELVER, the Netherlands and West African Network for Peace Building has shown a growing spillover of violent extremism from the Sahel into the West African states and plans to adopt a security and defensive approach to end the immediate challenges in the regions. Charles Arthur will tell us more about it. Over the past decade, terrorist groups in the Lake Chad, the Gulf of Guinea, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Togo, Nigeria and Niger have constituted threats to peace, security and governance with activities spreading to other regions, causing unrest, displacement of people and death. The launching of the early warning study on the spillover of violent extremism to ECOWAS coastal member states is an indication of strong commitment to end the trend. A study like this will uh, will contribute to the, a better knowledge and of course before moving to action is very important 
It is my hope that we will find time to properly analyze the study with a view to implementing its concrete, actionable recommendations. The joint study by ECOWAS, ELVA, the Dutch Embassy, and other partners give more insights into the spillovers, recruitments, and radicalization from all regions and calls for a joint response in developing tools to eliminating the threats. Our 2020-2024 priority activity plan to eradicate terrorism in our region. This plan is multifaceted, multidimensional, trying both to address the root causes of the terrorism in our region. ECOWAS is saying the fight against terrorists and extremists in regions should involve civil society actors while a defensive and security approach be adopted to stop the movement of arms. Charles Alpha there. Let's turn to the Judiciary Conference on Criminal Law and Human Rights holding in Abuja has highlighted the importance of rule of law compliance to Nigeria's quest for development. Speakers at the fourth annual conference warned that without respect to the rules and procedures laid down, no development can be attained in any sector. Femi Okewo has a story for us. Governor of Sokoto State, Aminu Waziri Tambua, who gave the keynote address virtually, spoke about the current security, political, and economic situation of the country and how the weight of the lack of adherence to the rule of law affects the judicial process of Nigeria. As a solution to what they see as the rising impunity in various sectors of governance, other speakers called for the involvement of civil society, the media, and religious groups to collaborate with governmental organizations to resolve Nigeria's security problems. The coordinator of the Rule of Law Development Foundation said the essence of the annual conference is to improve Nigeria's criminal law standards. No nation can be considered functioning or progress if it is unable to provide justice through the courts in criminal, civil, and commercial courts in matters. This year's conference focuses on updates from the judiciary and legislative developments. In Abuja, Femi Okewo, NJ News. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has declined to continue with the trial of former Aviation Minister Senator Stella Odua, pending when the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission would furnish the office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice with the case file for review. Olabodi Arewa reports that the defendant is facing a charge of fraud to the tune of five billion naira. At the resumption of proceedings this Monday, the Prosecution Council, representing the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, of M. Ufet, indicated readiness to proceed with the matter. One of the counsel in the defense team, James Onojesian, however argued that the defendant's plea could not be taken, saying the petition had been submitted to the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Abaka Malami, S.A.N., arguing that the child of Odua and eight other defenders was a witch hunt. He added that the Attorney General, in exercising his powers under the 1999 Constitution, as amended at the Administration of Criminal Justice Act of 2015, had in January this year requested the EFCC to furnish his office with the case file, a request that Odoja claims the FCC was yet to comply with. The FCC counsel, however, opposed the motion by the defense for the matter to be adjourned, but the court took judicial notice of the constitutional issues raised in the petition and ordered the parties to file written addresses on the matter. The case had been adjourned to February 10, 2022, for continuation. Meanwhile, the defenders are to continue enjoying the existing bail conditions earlier granted to them. Olabo Darewa, NTA News. Members of Manga, a border community in Takum local government area of Taraba State, which was recently attacked by alleged Cameroonian separatist fighters known as Ambazonians, have called on the federal government to restore the military base they had in the community in the past. They made the appeal when a delegation from Taraba State government in the company of security personnel paid an assessment visit to the area. Bem Hanya reports. <laughs> 
These women are still grieving over the murder of their village head, the late Chief Alata Manga, at the hands of the Ambazonian separatist fighters who crossed the border illegally into Nigeria to commit their atrocious acts. This is what remains of the late chief's house, which was set ablaze. Although the motive of the group is yet to be known, the fighters reportedly killed a total of six adults and three children, while 20 others are missing. Perhaps because they were giving refuge to these people who ran from the other side of the, of the country. I mean, people who ran from Cameroon and come here. Little did they know that these people are coming. The delegation made up of Taraba State Commissioner for Information and Reorientation, Danjuma Adamu, Commander 6th Brigade Nigerian Army Jalingo, Brigadier General Maboku, and Controller Nigerian Immigration Service Taraba State Nuhu Kutana Tanko. After assessing the situation, had an interactive session with the people. The effort the government has taken, as you see, in protecting life and property. Prompt action, you have seen everything. Everything is in place. Various speakers commended the federal and state governments for their swift response in sending security operatives to the area and called for the restoration of the former army base in the community, as well as the provision of power and telecommunication facilities. With the presence of the Nigerian army, CAM has returned to the community. From Manga in Takum local government area of Taraba State, Bem Hanya, NTA News. Our next stop will be Kaduna, where we join Suleiman. He is going to bring us the next set of reports. Thank you, Ruth, and welcome to Kaduna Network Center. Detachments of security personnel have been deployed to Com Forest along Abuja Kaduna Highway in search of unspecified number of people kidnapped by bandits. Haruna Muhammad reports that the incident happened a few kilometers to Kateri. For several hours, motorists plying Abuja Kaduna Highway were under siege. As kidnappers took several hours operating, as a result, a Zamfara State renowned politician was killed, and unspecified number of passengers were kidnapped. Before they come into the, into the road, people will see them and they will be cautious. The security breach took Kaduna State by surprise following the ongoing onslaught on locations of bandits and kidnappers then, which prompted the deployment of sophisticated equipment and personnel to hunt the perpetrators of this heinous crime. I have been brief about uh, what happened uh, here, and we have been assured by security forces that they are going back uh, to the drawing board. came here to assess the security arrangement of this place and upgrade the security arrangement of this place. And even now, definitely from now to tomorrow, we deploy another patrol vehicle and armor fossil carrier here. Government is reassuring motorists plying Abuja Kaduna Highway of continued 24 hour surveillance to secure the road. Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. Communities of Makaripi and Ikara in Kaduna State benefited from access road and dam infrastructure in tandem with federal government commitment to the promotion of agricultural and commercial activities in rural areas. Again, Haruna Muhammad reports. Communities of Makarfi and Ikara local government areas place priority on agriculture more than any business activity. It is for obvious reasons, with good arable land, climatic condition, and commitment by the people to contribute to the nation's food basket. We have uh, actually put it into uh, use. Our people are now happy. We have the farmers that are utilizing this water. Uh, and uh, we are all over to We are calling for more. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development Mahmoud Mohamed Abakar says beneficiaries should take ownership for an all-year irrigation farming season. The minister says the ministry has so far constructed over 1,000 roads across the federation. Uh, so there are so many things that this dam can do. And like I said, it's, it's just the beginning. What the ministry intends to do is to construct as many dams as possible to make dry season farming mainstream, completely part of the agricultural sector. So we have two seasons, wet season and dry season farming. And this is just uh, an example. Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. 
Mohammed in our Meduguri Network Center is standing by with more stories after the break. A meeting on the Petroleum Industry Act earlier scheduled for Thursday, 25th November 2021 has now been postponed. A new date will be announced later. All inconveniences are highly regretted. Announcer, al Lai Mohammed, Honorable Minister of Information and Culture. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264 or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk, app for iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. The NOA, for example, uh, has succeeded a great deal in sensitization during the pandemic. And we have found the community mobilization officers most effective in the sensitization and in the advocacy campaigns, creating awareness on the coronavirus uh, pandemic. We have done this through the, cre the production of jingles, which were very widely uh, distributed in different languages, in English, in Hausa, in Yoruba, in Igbo, in Tiv, in Igala, in Kanuri, in Fulfulde, in Ijo, in Isoko, in, uh, in Bini. In, in talk of any other language you can think of, we had translated sensitization messages. <laughs> Welcome to Meduguri on Nationwide. Borno State Government has debunked insinuation that it is forcing internally displaced persons to return to their communities of origin. Governor Babagana Umar Azulum made the clarification when he supervised distribution of over 500 million naira cash, support and food items to IDPs at the Bakasi camp in Meduguri, the Borno State capital. Mohamed Goni reports. The over 7,000 IDPs at Bakasi IDPs camp are part of the displaced citizens yearning to return home to normal life now that peace is gradually returning to the state as depicted by massive agricultural activities witnessed in this year's farming season. Each male and female head of household receive 100,000 naira, two bags of 25 kg rice, a carton of spaghetti and a gallon of cooking oil, while housewives receive 50,000 naira to enable them to return to their communities of origin. The beneficiary is cutting across five local government areas that include Goza, Mungunu, Nganzei, Guzamala and Marte were happy with the support and expressed readiness to return home. <laughs> Professor Zilum said the support was in response to clamor by the IDPs to support their return home. Government has decided to support all those that are going back home. The food items were donated by the Northeast Development Commission in order to support those that are willing to return home voluntarily while the cash support was given by the government of Borno State. The governor added that IDPs from the camp who may wish to live in Maiduguri can use the money given to rent houses in part of the city and further directed compilation of names of parents whose children are in tertiary institutions. Commissioner for Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement, Engineer Mustafa Gubio said two IDPs camp have so far been closed down in the metropolis in line with Governor Zulum's deadline for closure of IDPs camp by the end of this year and that Bakasi camp will be closed by 1st December in Maiduguri. Mohamed Goni, NTA News. As part of its social responsibility towards immediate communities it is serving, National Youth Service Corps Borno State has flagged off second phase of the 2021 Health Initiative for Rural Dwellers. The medical outreach for people of concern took place at Shatima Ali Mongono Teachers Village IDP's camp in Meduguri, the Borno State capital. Jadwa Jan Jasene reports. The initiative, which is a coordinated medical outreach in all the 36 states and FCT, is designed to reach out to the core rural areas to enhance the accessibility of healthcare services and also sensitize the people on disease prevention and control. 
Borno State NYC coordinator Nora Umar represented by Assistant Director, Skills Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development, Beatrice Daniel, said the scheme is aimed at impacting positively in the lives of the less privileged, hence the initiative among other community development services. He added that such interventions have recorded enormous impact towards reproductive health in various communities and IDP scams in Meiduguri. The coordinator plays to sustain the initiative and appealed for support from the state governments, non-governmental organizations and philanthropists to key into the program in order to bring healthcare services closer to the rural areas. Some core members sensitized the beneficiaries on personal hygiene, disease prevention and care. The event also featured medical checkup, tests, diagnosis, dispensing of drugs and referrals. In Meduguri, Jadua, John Jessini, NTA News and housing sent to kick off in December 2021 to evaluate the skills of enumerators, controllers and facilitators. Elizabeth Omori reports that on the level of reports on the preparedness by the National Population Commission. The second pretest exercise technologists affirmed will determine the methodology, questionnaires, data collection and manual for field work to be adopted for the 2022 national census. The commission says the exercise will be carried out professionally and scientifically in order to deliver a reliable, accurate, and verifiable census. Participants at the training of trainers will reevaluate the skills and practicals a demonstration of cooperation in the field with overall effort to deliver and to prepare the ground for the credible and acceptable census the second pretest will take place in 148 local government areas in 36 states of the Federation and FCT. After next year's census, how do we keep the Commission perpetually relevant to the national question? One person living with a disability should be considered and recruited in every state for the second pretest. Chairman of the Commission is appealing to states, local governments, and traditional institution to support the pretest exercise by allowing unfettered access to facilities and places to be enumerated. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NC News. Agricultural experts say full participation of youths in modern methods of farming will boost food production and also reduce unemployment in the country. This forms the basis for discussion at a maiden agricultural exhibition and symposium by the Obafemi Awolowo University Muslim Graduates Association in Ogun State Chapter. Yemi Dalemo reports. Discussions on the theme Agri-Business and Economic Insecurity, the way forward for entrepreneurs, led by Professor Abrazak Adibowale and Dr. Muiba Shitu, both from the Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkuta Funab, centered on various opportunities inherent in modern methods of farming. Experts want government to initiate policies capable of attracting youth to agribusiness and also open up more opportunity for training and skill acquisition for youth, venturing into the business in building capacity and manpower for food sufficiency. There's at any scale, either low, medium, high scale, there are opportunities for you to go into. Uh, the only thing is, well, like we have established, you, need, you may need some level of training so that you don't burn your fingers. Then you may also need some level of uh, enough market knowledge. We had like go sell my produce into to make maximum profit. So with that, the, the, the sky is the limit for the youth. The youth to keep going back into agriculture. They are afraid of agriculture because of some risk that are there. But there is a way by which they can start, either from the marketing angle or from the value addition angle. That's what we are encouraging the youth. The exhibition, according to the national president, Unifemga Abdul Fattah Olan Lege, is organized to map out ways to encourage youth in agriculture for optimal productivity. Highlights of the events include exhibition of agricultural products, various agrarian fabrics produced by the youth in Abelkuta, Yemi Dalimo, NT News. For Nigeria to achieve her developmental goals in science and technology, mathematics education must receive priority attention in the country. This was the focus of discussion between the Enugu State Government and the management of the National Mathematical Centre during a visit at the Government House. Susan Eze reports. 
Proponents of mathematics education maintain that for Nigeria to achieve her transformation agenda, government must recognize the interconnectivity between science, technology, and mathematics. To erase the phobia associated with mathematics in schools, the various areas of need in the subject curriculum must be considered to consolidate on the efforts of the National Mathematical Center in this regard, the management here seeks the cooperation of the Enugu State Government. The core purpose we are here is to see if we can collaborate in some key areas for us to intervene in the state of teaching and learning of mathematics in schools. The Engu State Government stated her determination to collaborate with the National Mathematical Center in driving the policies of mathematics education. The foundation of every science is mathematics. We therefore consider it an integral part of our commitment to education to embrace the growth and development of mathematics in our environment. The team presented some materials for the development of science and mathematics to the state government in Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. The days of chieftaincy tussles in communities in Enugu State may be over with the launch of an official website bearing all Gazetta chieftaincy constitutions of communities in the state. Inaugurating the online platform, the state governor, Ifai Uguayi, expressed hopes that the project will bring about social and economic justice and true democracy in community administration. Once more, let's hear from Susan Ize. Transiting all gazetted chieftaincy constitution of communities in Enugu State from hard copy to digital forms that leave no room for tampering with the document is an innovation the custodians of tradition in the state are very much pleased with. To Governor Ugwani, here represented by the deputy, this transformation will make it impossible for unscrupulous or desperate persons or groups to seek to compromise the sacrosanct provisions of community chieftaincy constitutions. This, he believes, will reduce disputes emanating from chieftaincy matters in communities. This project will no doubt give the communities a verified and authentic online presence promote transparency in community leadership, provide guidance in resource allocation, serve as a tool for this participation in the communities. With a click on the web address www.mocm.en.gov.ng, authentic verifiable information about communities in Enugu State are made available to the public. State Commissioner for Chieftaincy Matters, Mr. Charles Egumwe, however, hinted that the online document can neither be downloaded nor printed. Certified copies can only be acquired through the ministry if one pays the prescribed official fee to the government. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. More than 100 widows, including orphans and widowers in the Federal Capital Territory, had reasons to pick themselves up from the shackles and agony of losing their loved ones when a group Pit to Peak Foundation brought them some relief and a message of hope for survival. Charles Arthur reports. Sucker, hope, and a sense of belonging were once again restored to these women, majority of whom lost their husbands many years ago. For them, life has never been the same since the departure of their breadwinners. The rest, Orphans, while a handful of the men among these women are widowers. They have found a friend and a helping hand that cares all about their well-being. My husband died about four years and some months now with six children. Those people that contributed to this, uh, these things they gave us, they will never see shame in their life. Everybody have concern for widows. The widowers are neglected. And so I want to appreciate uh, Mama Africa. Andrea Uzoma Wadie is the founder of Pit to Peak Foundation. 
she is touched by the stories and predicaments of these women. For her, it's about an attempt to restore what life has taken from individuals, families, and the vulnerable groups. That I'm able to gather these women, to put smiles on their faces, at least be today, tomorrow. But I don't know what to say, but I am highly emotional. So what we're doing is to be voice to the voiceless. The ladies' arena showed of at least some days of three square meals, what to wear, and a chance to be part of the pit to pick family who is putting smiles on their faces. In Abuja, Charles Alpha, NTA News. It is difficult, if not impossible, to identify the actual needs of the people at the grassroots without the help of a functional local government system. Stakeholders and local government administration made this assertion while speaking on the importance of local government financial autonomy to the development of rural communities. Kelvin Samuel will tell us more about it. Local governments are created with the ultimate goal of bringing government closer to the people at the grassroots. In Nigeria, the local government reform of 1976 is expected to accelerate development and enable the local population to participate and hold those in power accountable in an event of misappropriation of funds. However, all these are impossible in the present situation of local government administration in Nigeria as most state governors have refused to let go of the local government funds. There are issues in the local government service and uh, one of those issues that is ringing bell is the issue of uh, local government autonomy. If given autonomy, it will be better for all of us in Nigeria. And being a grassroots government, it is expected that they, have, they should have the local government, the, the financial autonomy to be able to operate fully so that development will reach to the grassroots. It is worrisome that despite the quality of men and women elected into various local government councils across the country, state actors still believe they are too inexperienced to handle funds accruing to their councils. A situation the people say has led to deplorable state of council areas and a total lack of government presence in most rural communities. There is no doubt that the financial autonomy which includes the power to control and manage its finance, allocate resources to strategic places, will enable local councils implement policies and decisions that will promote grassroots development in the country. But the big question remains, who will save the local government system from the hands of those who are determined to cripple it? In Uyo, Kevin Summer, NTN. Let's take sports update. That's next. Former President Gulag Jonathan has again been recognized for his contributions to the development of karate in the country. This time, it is the Karate Federation of Nigeria in collaboration with the Japanese embassy.